Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Sports Kings NFL Weekly Countdown Show here on SB Nation Radio. I am your host, Mean Gene, the Sports Machine, getting you ready for week two of the National Football League. We are here at our Dallas studios, Parker University studios, and I am joined by, as always, my co-host, who now has the most infamous, famous <laughs> name, nickname of every of all sports talk show hosts in the country, hot. Just a, one word, <laughs> three letters, hot. I don't. Rod Justin, you, welcome to the show. You are very easy <laughs> to impress, Mean Gene. I see that now. But I do thank you for that compliment, and good morning to you, brother. How are you? Hey, I am great, man. I tell you, I, I am so excited because, number one, you know, it's week two of the NFL, and I know we have a lot of stuff to talk about. We have week one to talk about. Still can't even get week one out of my head, Rod. And here we are already staring week two down the barrel this morning. Hey, it was a lot of things that went on week one, me and Gene. I mean, how can you forget last week, Gene, nine teams, not one, not two, not three, not four, Uh but nine teams Uh were trailing in the fourth quarter and came back to win their game. Oh, yeah. Could have been 10. I know the San Diego, uh, the Chiefs and the Chargers was one of those games. I mean, we got a bunch of them to talk about, folks. Once again, the show is brought to you by ONFX.com, ONFX.com. You can get yourself a unique professional website at an affordable price is onfx.com. So, um, you know what? You're right, man. I tell you what, you know, just last week we was complimenting college football because they did they you know, so week, great. Yep, yep. And the NFL said, oh, no, little boys. We're going <laughs> to show y'all how show we do done, this right? thing. And last Sunday, oh, my goodness. Rod. 11 of the 16 games in week one were decided by seven points or fewer. Four games were decided by one point. Wow. One point. It was some good football last week. Some of the things we're going to talk about, folks, on this show today, okay, please listen. I hope you got your coffee because I know it's early, week two, like I said, of the National Football League. We're going to talk about some of those comebacks here, some of those games where it looked like your team was going to win. They did not. You had to watch the whole Four quarters of some of these games last week. Something tells me it's going to be something like that today, but we're going to talk about We're going to talk about some of the gutsy coach calling, play calling stuff that we've, you know, never seen. We're even going to talk about a general manager who went into the locker room and ripped his team apart. And I'm talking about the the Arizona Cardinals, man. Sunday night football, just when we saw all that we saw Sunday, Sunday night, man, the New England Patriots. How many GMs and owners over there in that AFC East now are like, what? What do we have to do to get ahead? Yeah, I mean, Gene, I mean, the opportunity, the the window was wide open for them. You know, going out to Arizona, for sure loss. You know, this coming week, okay. Brady's not there. We can jump on real quick. Two and two at best, but we're looking at them to be 0-4, 1-3. But me and Gene, like I told you, and you told me I was wrong, and New England Patriots fans, don't start cursing me out. Tom Brady has played his last game <laughs> as a New England. <laughs> you're, not, you're not going with that again, Tom are you? Brady has played his last no game. No Hall of Fame or nothing, no. No, no, he, no he, he's going to the Hall okay, of Fame. Okay, we give him Hall of Fame. But he will not get on that field again this oh, year. Oh, my goodness. Folks, let me okay, tell you. Okay, I'm just joking. I'm yeah, just, I, I'm, I know, <laughs> I know. Uh, you know, and when you said that a couple of weeks ago, I'm like, no, he didn't, right? <laughs> so, anyway. We'll talk about that. We also will talk about some of the uh, things that t- – well, it was September 11th last week, so yep. nothing went, uh, you know, crazy except for the Monday night game. We'll talk about that, the the Rams. We will talk about oh, wow. the Los Angeles Rams. Don't wow. you know, today the Los Angeles Rams will play their first game in L.A. in 22 years. 22 years. And wow. believe me, let me tell you, after what we saw on Monday night up mm-hmm. there in San Francisco, how mm-hmm. does an NFL team not score a point? This is not good when you're trying to bring football back to L.A. Mm-hmm. because the L.A. fans, man, let me tell you, there's too much to do than to sit around and, and, and watch a rebuilding team. Is Jeff Fisher the answer? And, and I know what you're going to say. He's been my coach crush for the longest. Like when there was an opening here in Dallas, mm-hmm. I wanted him to be the Cowboys. Heck. But if you think about his body of work, is Jeff Fisher really the man to turn this team around? He didn't even, not even start. He didn't even dress golf last week, and I don't know what point he was trying to prove at that. I don't, I don't know. But of course, he's going to be dressed today, and he's going to play today. And you're in mm-hmm. front of your home team, mm-hmm. first mm-hmm. game. You're the California boy. I get that, but I don't understand what Fisher's doing. But his whole entire body of work, 
I don't know. No, other than making it to a Super Bowl and, and making it to Super and Bowl being with one McNair. of the longest tenured, you know, coaches at one spot there in Tennessee for all those years. Everybody just likes him, I guess. Everybody likes him. But yeah, he didn't have a choice. I mean, you get beat twenty eight nothing with Case Keenum, you have no choice now but to put But would it have been twenty eight nothing? It would have been excusable if it was twenty eight nothing with your rookie quarterback. True. You had two rookie quarterbacks True. starting last uh last week. You know, and that honestly, Gene, if you think about it, that makes nine consecutive seasons which is the longest streak uh, since 1950 that a rookie quarterback has started in the open week. And we all know we're talking about Carson Wentz. 50. Yeah, 1950. <laughs> we also, we all, we're talking about Carson Wentz and we're talking about Dak Prescott. Right. Carson Wentz, I apologize. I thought you were going to be crappy doo-doo last oh. week. And you had a phenomenal oh, game. Maybe we got played by the Philadelphia Eagles and yeah, thinking They knew something. what they were doing. I mean, you get rid of Bradford you get rid and of you Bradford. go with the rookie with, yep. without even a sweat. Yep. And look what happened. And look what happened. He, and the key is no interceptions from either one of them. Last week, both of them played great games. Talking about Prescott as well. I know he's still – that Prescott needs to r- realize how much power he has. And the power he needs to realize he has is to say, <laughs> I want Terrence Williams cut. No, I'm just, I'm yeah, just joking. Yeah, but, hey, but, look here. You got to be careful not to let that kind of power go to a rookie's head because, well, hey, get, get a win. You know, and it's so funny. Living here in Dallas and listening to sports talk radio, especially when Dallas lose a game – but, you know, hey, I and we'll talk uh, more about the Terrence Williams and, and that whole fiasco because the Cowboys should be 1-0. I mean, at least when you got a kicker like Dan Bailey, you almost guaranteed but if you, you get to the right part of that field, you're going to get three points. But, you know, in all, in all fairness to Terrence Williams, we can't blame just him. It was an idiotic play from a football perspective. Understand, you know, that competitiveness kicked in. But there were plays leading up. Dunbar true, made a bonehead play. There were plays that I mean, penalties getting, in, getting inside of the the a lot the, of penalties. A lot of penalties. I mean, not more than your Raiders though, but <laughs> getting inside the the red zone that many times and only coming mm-hmm. away with field goals, and that's going to hurt you. So right. I can't. You're going to put some of the blame on Terrence Williams, but you can't put 100 percent on him. Speaking of the Raiders, Jack Del Rio says, "Hey, you know what? I know the statistics was against me." I'm here to coach. I like that. Though. I, I don't. I don't. I'm not on the field with a calculator in my hand, wondering what play I should call. I like that. You know, Jack like Del Rio. That. I t- got the respect of that locker room. That's got what the I was respect just about to say. Of those fans yeah. in Los Angeles, yeah. and what a win for for a team right there in the Superdome. That was one of those games you was talking about. That I mean, it looked like the Saints was going to run away with that game. Four hundred and forty-three. I mean, four hundred and twenty-three yards passing and four touchdowns that Drew Brees had. Against these, these and that's a win in, in at that's home. A win anytime at, at home, at, at, at home, but in, in, in Superdome, a place that they don't usually uh, lose games. And yeah, Sean Payton, we the hot yeah. seat will be mentioned in week two. I'm sorry, I know it's early. Week mm-hmm. two, mm-hmm. you know our uh, former sports king, Ronnie B, always <laughs> brought up hot seat. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to jump on him for bringing it up so early in the season. Hot seat already, Gene. Week two, hot seat, and I, there's a couple other people. How about John Fox? How about the Bears? Go to Houston, get 14 points up on there. Look like they're going to run Houston out of Houston. Mm-hmm. Next thing you know, the Houston defense shut them down in the second half. The Chicago Bears didn't score a point. Not they a lose point. 23 to 14. Yeah, I mean, Houston is one of those teams, not necessarily a surprise team. We expect that from them. We expect that from them with that defense that they have, and we expect it, you know, on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah. Will Fuller, I told you. I mm. told you to pick him up in your fantasy football mm. draft, and you didn't. No, I didn't. Yeah, because he's on but my I did bench. win last week, though. <laughs> <laughs> so how did your fantasy go last week, Mean G? Hey, Antonio Brown, need well, I say anymore, oh having the most – Famous wide receiver, the most famous player in, in the NFL right now uh, to to have on your team. Everybody, you everybody think, that has uh, Antonio Brown on their team, they should have won, won last They should have won. They, they should have won. won. Unless right. they just didn't start anybody Somebody, else. Somebody, yeah, but Antonio Brown. You should Brown, thank the Redskins defense for, uh, for your victory. Yeah, no, I think week. the Redskins coaching staff for not putting Josh well, Norman the, I'm sorry, do you, on yeah, yes, uh, yeah. Antonio Brown. Boneheadedness. Should Josh Norman, I mean, everyone has criticized him. Should he have demanded to go play that guy? I don't know if you the best. I he's mean, you look at you look. I'm at, gonna tell you right now, he's not the best. Let's look at Deion Sanders back in the day. You what, can't compare what, the two. Well, I'm just saying, would Deion ever step down? I mean, you got some great players out there, Pac-Man Jones. There's a lot of guys that don't. Pac-Man Jones. I mean, that would just. Uh, uh, I want that competitive. That want that okay, competitiveness. Okay, okay. That's what I'm talking about. Did I'm you not, compare Pac-Man Jones? No, I ain't comparing Jones? Pac-Man. Well, I'm just comparing. Hey, give me your what's best. What's in your coffee cup right now? <laughs> What's in your cup? But the, I mean, the biggest thing that I got, I don't think that Josh Norman is the greatest a defensive back everyone says he is. I think it was the protection of that front seven 
at Carolina that that shielded some of his his play. You don't have to say that he is. His bank account tells him that he is. Well, I mean, true, true. I mean, but that's the Redskins though. You know, the Redskins would jump up and just dish out money. They've always done that before. Yeah. Well, I tell you what. I tell you what. We have a lot of stuff to talk about, folks. Here in this. First segment of the Sports Kings here on SB Nation. It's coming to an end. Grab your coffee. We'll give you time to come back and sit down because we're going to get into some of the picks. We're going to get into some of the games that shocked us. Stick around, folks. You listen to me, Gene, Hot Rod Johnson, right here on SB Nation Radio. <laughs> 